It's quiet. Too quiet. All right, I'm just doing a little bit of a sound check here to make sure that everything is actually working properly. Um, I have OBS Studio fired up here. So, um, and of course I've even got the, uh, the little webcam here. So uh, while, I, while I fiddle just for a moment here, while I fiddle for a moment, um, let's make sure that it actually is doing what I think it's doing. There we go. It looks like it's doing what I think it's doing. And um, at the moment, you can, uh, well, you can maybe see the little, uh, see the little camera sitting in the bottom there. Uh, I have OBS up and running. I'm popping it open. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade to a scene that does not involve a little camera in the corner. So right now, here's what I'm going to do. Oop, oop, I just closed the little camera thingy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wave, hi, uh, how you doing? This is me. I'm in the bottom corner of the screen there. At least I can see myself in the bottom corner of the screen. Uh, by the way, if you are watching right now and you cannot hear me properly, please let me know before I talk for like an hour and a half. Well, actually, I'm not going to talk for an hour and a half. I expect I'll be on for about half an hour or so. So an hour and a half is not happening. Just saying. Anyway, so I'm going to get rid of the uh, the annoying little picture of myself in the corner. Here, I'll, I'll make funny faces just for a second. I'll do this sort of stuff. There we go. And that's it. That's it. I'm getting rid of, I'm getting rid of the little camera in the, uh, in the bottom corner. Okay. All right. Transition to a scene that does not have a camera. Okay. Um, hey, thanks for joining me. If you're here, if you're out there, if you're out there, oh, hold on a second. There we go. All right. All right. Um, today we're going to do a Slackware. We're going to do Slackware. Now, uh, whether or not you're actually watching this live or you're watching it after the fact, I actually, uh, got some interesting comments yesterday. I was doing the radio show, the Computer America radio show. And, um, when I did the show yesterday, um, they pointed out to me that, uh, or, you know, somebody pointed out to me after the fact that they actually liked the fact that I did a live, uh, installation of a distribution where they could see where everything fell apart and where all the problems existed and so forth. So if you happen to be the sort of person who likes to see uh, me fail, uh, <laughs> this is the way to do it. Okay, so today we're going to do Slackware. And in case you don't know, in case you don't know, Slackware uh, can be found over at slackware.com, S-L-A-C-K-W-A-R-E.com. You can actually see it on the browser that I've got up at the moment. Incidentally, this is actually a good time to tell you about the browser that I'm using here, if you're at all curious. This is a browser called Min, M-I-N, and um, it's really kind of a cool idea. Uh, yes, I am going to talk about Slackware, but I'm going to mention this browser right now. Um, Min is literally a little tiny browser that is designed to be fast, that is designed to uh, have, you know, some nice little fixtures, but to basically to be clean, to be clean, to give you a clean, fast browsing experience. And uh, I've been playing with it and it's kind of interesting. So, hey, you might just want to check it out. You know, just, um, it, you know if you are finding that uh, Google Chrome or Firefox is just too darn huge, on your system. And I have to say, I actually posted something just recently about um, Google Chrome. And uh, frankly, it was about the fact that Google Chrome is chewing up all my resources. It's hungry. My system is always like just dying. Like if you take a look over here, let me minimize this here. There's there's my uh, super cool uh, system monitor over in the corner here, 16 February, there's Tux. Uh, as you can see, I'm running Ubuntu 1710 Artful Aardvark. And um, there are my CPUs bouncing back and forth on this side over here, core zero, core one, and um, and of course the memory that I've got in use at the moment. Now, I have been seeing uh, when I run things, and let me uh, fire up a terminal window here. If I run something like HTOP, uh, which is kind of like a pretty top, um, top is a performance monitor tool that's available on uh, pretty much every Linux system. And in fact, I'd be surprised if it wasn't included by default on Linux systems. Anyway, HTOP is a bit more colorful. It's a little bit more beautiful. It's a little bit nicer to take a look at. And uh, you might just want to check it out because, um, like I said, it's just 
it's prettier. It's prettier. It's got nicer ways of finding out what's actually happening on your system. So there you go. So I was taking a look at my system on things like top or H top, but basically also on the screen here. And my system was like just dying. And every time I took a look under top, it was always Google Chrome. So browsers, especially if you've got like a heck of a lot of tabs open, which I tend to do on a regular basis, can be extremely hungry. And, um, that's just the way it is. By the way, if you're on live with me, like if you're live and on with me at the time, say hi. There's a little chat window over on the side there. Just go, hi, Marcel, I'm here. And if you have some questions, feel free to ask the questions as I go. Anyway, so Min. Min is just a lightweight browser that you can use as an alternative to the uh, rather hungry uh, super browsers of the day. And my mind isn't 100% made up on it yet. I've only recently started playing with it. I think I've been using it about a week now. So far, I like it. I like it. I like the clean design. I like the clean look. I like the fact that it's a browser as opposed to, um, you know, 100 million other things. But I have to say that uh, Google owns me in a lot of levels, you know, I, as in I don't work for Google, but I use an awful lot of their products. So Chrome is extremely useful for that. Anyway, so the Slackware project. Slackware, you need to know, is the oldest continually maintained Linux distribution that's out there. It's created by a guy named Patrick Volkerding. I have to get that right. I always want to say Boulder King, but it's actually Volkerding. And uh, Patrick is the uh, original developer maintainer of the Slackware system. And Slackware was based on a distribution. Let me see if I can get rid this correctly. Um, oh, good grief. I actually forgot. I have actually forgotten. I'm going to have to go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia and uh, Slackware. Slackware. Wikipedia Slackware. There's going to be something here. Um, Slackware. Wikipedia. There's going to be something in Wikipedia. You see, it goes back to 1993. There we go. Soft Landing Linux System, which was actually created a year before. So, so uh, Slackware originates, um, originates from basically a year later, and it was Patrick uh, deciding that I've got to make this easier and uh, to work with, maybe prettier and so forth. So anyway, Slackware. Slackware is at 14 point uh, something or other. Let me just jump over to where we're going to work here. And if I do a, take a look at my uh, console and I do an LS, there it is, a 14.2. 14.2 install DVD, which I downloaded from the Slackware website. And there it is. Uh, whoops, let's go back to the Slackware uh, project uh, page. And uh, it, what you do is you just go over where it says get Slack. And uh, you can download it from either a uh, mirror or you can use the torrent. I use the torrent. The torrent is nice. It's friendly. It, you know, it doesn't, of course, nowadays, every site can handle the uh, traffic, I think, or pretty much anyway. Um, excuse me a second while I drink some coffee. So you wouldn't see this if you were um, if you if you were not uh, you know if I was not doing this live you wouldn't see me taking pauses and drinking coffee. But here I am. I'm drinking coffee. Okay. So what I'm using here is I'm going to create a virtual machine using AQEMU. There are other virtual machine tools out there. There's boxes, GNOME boxes. If you're an, an Ubuntu user. Um, there is also Vert Manager, and believe it or not, you can do all this stuff at the command line if you're crazy. <laughs> Let me give you an idea. All of these tools, like AQEMU and Vert Manager, all use basically um, uh, QEMU uh, hyphen, and uh, you'll see that there are a whole whack of different architectures that QEMU can mimic. And any modern system, by the way, can use KVM. KVM allows you to do in-processor acceleration. And pretty much, like literally pretty much any modern distribution will let you do that. Um, I'm going to be using QEMU system x86-64. And in fact, if you want here, I'll highlight it so that you can see it on the screen there. QEMU hyphen system hyphen x86 underscore 64. I'm not going to be doing this from the command line. I'm going to be using the nice little graphical interface, okay? So this is how we're going to do it here. Um, but, but as you can see, there are a whole whack of different architectures that this can mimic. And so consequently, you can run like tons of different machines if you just happen to have the, uh, the system image to work from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another thing that you don't get if you're not watching live is you don't hear you don't you don't hear me cough or clear my throat because let's face it, I edit all that stuff out when I create cooking with Linux videos. But anyway, so there you go. So that's what it is. So we're gonna say create a virtual machine. I'm just gonna go with typical. It's Linux 2.6 because it's a modern kernel. For the machine accelerator, I do have a modern machine. I've got an if in case you're curious, it's an Acer Aspire. And it has an Intel Core i5 inside and a uh, NVIDIA GeForce 940 MX graphics card with two gigabytes 
of, um, of dedicated uh, graphic memory. And of course, if you take a look way over here, let me just move that over here for a second. You can see that I've got 12 gigabytes of RAM on this machine. So it's a reasonably punchy machine. So I'm gonna go Slackware. Now, if you've installed a distribution lately, any modern Linux distribution lately, and remember, say hi if you're there, say hi in the chat. If you've installed any modern Linux distribution lately, um, this is gonna look really weird to you because despite the fact that Slackware has been around all these years, um, there are some interesting differences that you're just not going to see in another distribution. All those graphical installers that you're used to, forget it. All right, here we go. Let's click next to user mode network. That means I'm using my own PC's network stack. I'm not gonna give it a, uh, an IP address or anything. So let's go next. Let's click finish. All right, so now we've created a machine. And again, I could use Vert Manager, uh, GNOME Boxes, but like I said, I don't like GNOME Boxes. I use either Vert Manager or AQEMU. By the way, if you're the developer of AQEMU and you happen to be watching this at some point, or if you're somebody that is good at this kind of development, AQEMU is a nice virtual machine interface. I'm not, I'm not a programmer like that. I, I, you know, this isn't the thing I can do, but you know what? It's worth it. Like somebody pick this project up and continue working with it. Okay, please do that. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, uh, let's go over to virtual machine over here. Uh, we are gonna boot from a CD-ROM and in this case, the CD-ROM is gonna be the ISO image and the ISO image, just in case you have forgotten, is this one over here, Slackware 64.14.2 install DVD ISO. That is what we are going to install, okay? And that's our CD-ROM in this case. Free memory, I am going to give this machine two gigabytes of memory. Uh, speaker AC, that's fine. I'm just gonna go with the default graphic, uh, default sound card rather, sorry. And graphics card. Now, default basically rides on top of whatever graphics card you are using. It's not necessarily the highest resolution. If you want like super teeny, ridiculously high, you know, resolution, you can go with a VMware graphics card. That might be a little tiny bit over the top. QXL seems to, seems to work reasonably well to get a higher resolution. So, and QXL allows you to, uh, to connect to it using a, uh, you know, some virtualization. So I'm just gonna say QXL for the moment. <clears throat> this may not be the best choice. We'll find out a little bit later. Apply and uh, I'll give it two of my four CPUs. All right, two of my four CPUs. There we go. Graphics card, CD-ROM, blah, 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 all good. Let's go over to media media there's the disk that we just created and if you remember it's a 20 gig disk it says that right down there image virtual size 20 gig that's the default by the way i could have made it smaller but that's what i'm giving it at the moment um and with slackware that's probably a good idea and i'll explain why in just a moment i'm going to go to my isos folder I'm gonna say Slackware and I'm gonna say, okay. So now if you take a look at media, I'm gonna click apply. But now if you take a look at media, it shows that I have a hard disk, but I also have a CD-ROM drive. The CD-ROM drive is over here. And, um, and uh, the CD-ROM drive is over here. And uh, we are basically ready to go. Let me just do one more thing here. Uh, I am going to, so you know, Um, there we go. Hi, Marcel here using my son's Chromebook to type. So there you go. I'm using my son's Chromebook in case uh, somebody's on and they see that there's another person there. It's actually me. Anyway, um, there we go. All right, so let's boot this sucker. Let's click the uh, button over here that says start or the play button or whatever you like. Let's click start and have a look at this, okay? I am actually gonna, I'm actually gonna do a couple of spaces here because I don't want it to boot right away. I wanna show you this. like. Okay, so if you have installed anything recently, any Linux distribution of any type recently, then you know this looks a little bit weird. Okay, it looks a little bit weird because we're booting into a non-graphical text-only install. Well, guess what? You ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, let, me, um, let me stretch that out. In case you're wondering, uh, the AQEMU window continues to operate in the back. It's always back there. Uh, but let me just stretch this out as much as possible so that you can see what's happening as much as possible. Uh, the fonts may be slightly distorted, but at least you'll see what's going on. And let's hit enter. There we go. Classic boot sequence. Classic boot sequence. All text. Don't you love it? I think it's great. I love classic boot sequences. All right. <laughs> Look at this keyboard map. <laughs> you know what? 
when in doubt, hit enter. Okay, Slackware login. Well, we're going to log in as root. Uh, there is no password at this moment. But if you take a look up here, it'll actually tell you that you have to, you have to, uh, it actually, you know, uh, you can type, uh, let me see, uh, I've, I've scrolled off the screen already. But anyway, you can set up to install. So what you're going to do is you're going to type, literally type setup to install on this machine. Or you can mount your Linux partition and do all sorts of other things. Package tool is how you install. If you're a Debian user, uh, you know that you do apt space install. Well, it's PK PKG tool under Slackware. Okay. Um, and if I were to try to install this like right now, if I, if I go into setup, like just let me just go into setup here. And uh, it says there don't seem to be any partitions on this machine. There is no way to create a partition from this screen. So... So in some ways, um, you know, let's let's uh, let's hit uh, let's let's hit clear here. In some ways, Slackware, if you actually want to get down and dirty and learn some hardcore, you know, get some hardcore Linux chops going here, okay, um, Slackware is probably a really good place to start. It really probably is. So let me just do F D I S K. Whoops, F disk. And oops, sorry, FDISK-L will show me what disks, it's SDA. So let me scroll. So SDA, all the details on that. I'm going to clear that again. FDISK-L slash dev slash SDA. Remember, this isn't my hard drive. This is the hard drive in the virtual machine that we're running in the background, okay? So FDISK, so um, F, oh, FDISK-L, that was kind of stupid. I, just, I didn't want to do that shell. I wanted to just do FDISK slash dev slash SDA. See? I made a mistake, just like that. More coffee drinking, more coffee drinking. Okay, um, let's go here. And uh, let me see, uh, welcome to FDisk, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I P for print, there's nothing assigned yet. So what I'm gonna do is say new to create a new partition. This is like old school. This is truly, truly old school. We start at sector 2048 on this particular disk, and I'm going to I'm creating the swap partition first. So I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to say uh, not that you know we really need it, but I'm going to say 512m. Okay, so 512 meg is my Linux partition, and I'm going to change the partition type because the default. Because, well, let me just show you here. If I go P for print, it shows that type is ID83, which is Linux. I want to swap partition. Actually, let me just ask to add the uh, second part of the disk right now. Okay. So I'm going to go uh, N for new again, and I'm going to say another primary partition because I'm allowed up to four primary partitions. I have one at the moment. There are three additional ones. So I'm going to say, that, again, this is like really old school. So two partitions, I'm going to say start here, and I'm going to say end here. So now I have two partitions, both Linux type partitions. That first one, the first one at the beginning there, the 512 uh, meg one, because these are 512 uh, byte sectors here. Um, so it says, you know, it says uh, 105 or 623 instead. Um, sorry, 1048 uh, for the number of sectors. I want to change that to a swap partition. The Linux partition is fine, but I want the first one to be a swap partition. So now I'm going to go T for Linux partition type, and I'm going to say 1. And uh, I'm going to say, if you want to find out what all the different types are and you don't know what a Linux uh, swap partition is, you can just do L. And uh, if you take a look here, oh, way over up here, okay, way over up here, it says, whoops, and uh, let me see. Uh, I don't know if you can see my little mouse uh, cursor here, but I can't highlight this inside the uh, browser window. But 82 is Linux swap partition, 83 is your default uh, Linux partition. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say 82 is the partition that I want for Linux swap. And now if I do a P over here, there you go, magic, SDA1 is my 512 meg uh, swap partition. SDA2 is my 19.5 uh, gig basic Linux partition. So now I want to write this and um, that's it. I've done it. The partition table has been altered. And now it's time to go into setup. So set up, set up, set up, set up. All right. Um, Set up your swap partitions. I've already done that. Uh, SDA1 Linux swap partition. Okay. Uh, we'll now prepare your system swap space. Yes. Uh, would you like to check for bad blocks? No, you know, I don't want to. Uh, so there we go. Swap on. Swap partition has been activated. Now we're going to select the partition that the Linux system is going to be installed on. And that's the second partition there, the uh, nearly 20 gig partition. So select. 
format. Yes, I do want to format it, and it's going to be ext4. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of different um, we've got a whole bunch of different partition types, or sorry, uh, file system types. I could do riser, blah blah blah, but I'm just going to do classic ext4 formatting. Formatting. All right. Okay. All right. Install from a Slackware CD or DVD. Well, as it turns out, we've got a CD. Excuse me. <laughs> See, I would edit that out as well. I wouldn't have burped into the microphone. Anyway, install for me Slackware CD or DVD. So we hit OK and uh, scan for the DVD. Yeah, sure. What the heck? Scan for the DVD. <laughs> uh, it, it, it thinks that there's, you know, it pretends that there's an actual drive. This is, oh, this is so old school. I just love it. Okay. So, and here we can say package selection. There are a whole bunch of packages that we can install. Um, basically, I'm installing pretty much everything. Everything in the, except that the only thing I'm not installing is the international language support for KDE. That is the only thing I'm not installing. Okay. Other than that, I've got X, you know, uh, my, you know, basic Linux stuff and so forth. And now I hit OK and um, install everything. Nine plus gig of software recommended. Okay. Now let's just talk about why this is recommended. This is recommended because, I mean, I could, I could, you know, modify this as at will, but the reason that I want to install everything is because the package system, package tool, the package system for Slackware does not have the, um, uh, the prerequisite checks that things like uh, yum or, you know, which works with RPM or um, I'm trying to think of what Zeus's uh, uh, package management tool is called. Uh, yet another Yast, that's right. Uh, yet another system tool, Yast. It doesn't have that. Or if you're coming from the uh, Debian world or the uh, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, uh, everything, Star Ubuntu, all the various Ubuntus out there, apt. If you install a package, if you go apt space, install space, some kind of a package, everything just gets installed by default. Not so with uh, Slackware. Slackware is not quite so friendly. Uh, a lot of things will break. So just install everything, okay? Full installation mode. Install all packages without prompting. Um, and here we go. We are now in the uh, rather, you know, I, I don't know how you get your jollies, but... <laughs> <laughs> but this would be what uh, you might think of as the boring stage of installing a Linux distribution. So this thing will just go on and on until it gets to basically the point. I probably should have installed a, a slightly smaller version of this. Um, but uh, we're installing the kernel fir firmware, the kernel, everything is happening magically as we go here. Ah. Uh coffee taking a taking a chance to drink some more coffee here so anyway so that is how slackware installs if uh, if you know if this can happen in the next you know five or ten minutes while i'm still on here um i would be happy to show you what it looks like when x starts up on this thing but at the moment we are just installing slackware in the background um if you're on and you have a question, this would be a good time to ask because uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just sitting here waiting at the moment uh, while this does its installation. I could, uh, I could sing you a song. I could tell you some stuff. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Um, um, if you have not been watching, um, you know, I, I do watch. I watch television. I watch uh, Netflix. I have. Uh, I have a uh, subscription to Netflix, and Netflix has changed our lives here because we have still have cable, and we don't actually do anything with the cable it's just um it's just uh it's something that we pay for that we never actually use it's really sad actually if you stop to think about it but uh we are still uh using it nevertheless but uh, we've been watching frankie and grace grace and frankie a couple of shows that i've been watching uh is it frankie and grace or grace and frankie frankie and grace grace and frankie i could probably google that uh let me google it while this is installing here um Oh, it's Frankie and Grace. It's Frankie and Grace. There we go. It's Frankie and Grace. It's an absolutely awesome show. No, it's Grace and Frankie. Curses. Curses. I got it wrong. Curses. Um, anyway, it stars uh, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's an absolutely brilliant show. Martin Sheen, Sam Waterston are their ex-husbands uh, who found out at some point in their lives that they're gay, 
and run off and get married after after they get I mean it's just it's it's a brilliant show you have to watch it Grace and Frankie just do it trust me on this one the other one that we've been watching which is which is kind of awesome while I'm waiting for the install let's go back and take a look how are we doing for the install here this is still happening this is still happening the other one that you have to watch okay I don't know how old you are but when I was a kid I read Archie comics Archie comics A R C H I E comics okay Archie comics all right well Archie comics there we go Still happening in the background. QEMU system is the thing that's using up all the resources. OBS, uh, which is what I'm doing the live stream on. But um, the other show that we've been watching is, uh, and again, this is something I would not be doing if I did a, just a plain old Cooking with Linux video. But the other one we've been doing is based on Archie Comics, and it's called Riverdale. And it's, it's seriously dark and uh, occasionally scary. And uh, if you really, really love the old Archie comics, you will either really, really love this show or really, really hate it, okay? And you may really hate it because the show... Ooh, Black Panther. I can hardly wait to see that. Um, because the show is just so insanely um, dark and it plays games with the characters that long time, you know, readers of Archie comics when they were kids might find a little disturbing. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Disturbing. Anyway, so there you go. Riverdale TV series. Uh, you can feel free to check that one out. Also, if you want, uh, you know, there's my marcelgagne.com page. Uh, there's also my cooking with Linux, cookingwithlinux.com with linux.com which i will try to keep up to date but you know i kind of suck at that sort of thing and the other thing that you should probably pay attention to is youtube.com slash and you probably know how to do this because you know you're here free thinker at a large and um and uh if you go here, you're going to see all my videos. I also have playlists that uh, uh, playlists that show my um, Cooking with Linux videos. Uh, this one obviously shows that I'm live now. Cooking with Linux videos. So there's the Cooking with Linux playlist. And if you happen to be into games, games, games. I like to play games as well. So I do streams of games. So let's just go back and have a look and see how Slackware is doing. You know, oh my goodness, this is still going. KDE artwork. Artwork for KDE. Hmm. More coffee more coffee. Maybe I should crack open a bottle of wine, but I'm still drinking coffee. I'm still drinking coffee. All right, let's go back and take a look at this for a second. So there's that. Um, I, you know, if you follow on my uh, Cooking with Linux channel, oh, sorry, I'm not my Cooking with Linux channel, Freethinker at Large channel on YouTube, um, there's a little button here that says subscribe. See that button that says subscribe? It's insanely important that you do that. Please, please, please subscribe to my channel. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, and, and then you can be subscriber number 1095, assuming, of course, you're watching this at this very instant, or subscriber 1096 and so on and so on. But please, subscribe. Um, you know, it, it helps me. And, um, and if you are watching one of the videos, like, for instance, uh, this one here where I talk about what we should do. Whoops, let me pause that. See, sound work. <laughs> if you're watching that one there, then, um, you know, uh, please leave comments as well. You know, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you'd like me to do. And um, whether it's gaming stuff or whether it's uh, cooking with Linux that you are into, do let me know. All right. Okay. Let's go back and take a look at our Slackware install. My goodness, this is still happening. This may take a while. Hmm. Hmm. What should we do in the meantime while we wait for this install to continue? Um, let's take a look at uh, dressing up our desktop. Okay. Let's do a little window dressing stuff, shall we? All right. I'm going to go to configure desktop. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize the QEMU window. But there's my desktop. There's the background there. I've got nice little widgets and so forth. But uh, what you may not know is that uh, there are some really fascinating things that you can do as far as configuring your system. If you're running a KDE system, obviously, in this case, if I go into system settings um, and, uh, and my goodness, Slackware, you're huge. You're huge, Slackware. Don't take it like that. Uh, <laughs> workspace theme, workspace themes. Um, there are, uh, you know, color schemes and so forth that the system is running. Uh, you know, we can go breeze dark and we can go apply and that will change the look and feel of the system. There we go. All these things are carried over. If you just want to go with themes like uh, system themes and looks and so forth, you can go down here. Take a look at this. You go down here where it says get new looks. 
this is bonus content at the moment at the moment because you know we're waiting for slackware to install so go down here where it says get new looks click on that it goes out to the internet system settings add-on installer oxygen future look and feel um, and as you can see people rate them to decide you know what they think of it um, if you want you can sort them by ratings and just for fun and uh, there's slackware still installing in the background slackware so i haven't forgotten what it is that we were doing here i am still doing slackware uh it's just you know it's it's doing its thing in the background so here we go uh tweet look and feel the default breeze blah 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 let's take a look and see what it says for most downloads most downloads would tend to show you what people are really you know what they want the most Yes, I'm taking a pause to drink more coffee. Ah, all right, here we go. Adapt to KDE, port of the popular GT GTK theme. Hmm. Uh, Windows 10, dark look and feel. Numix, Numix, Numix. That's kind of an interesting one. Oxygen uh, Modern, a theme inspired by GNOME with <laughs> the BS. <laughs> I'm going to install that one just because. Um, Yosemite. Let's go with the Yosemite uh, JPEG version. There we go. Uh, if you if you can actually say that with a straight face, uh, you know, without the BS, then um, I'm doing it. I'm installing it. And finally, Equilibrium. Uh, official Equilibrium level one look and feel. Oh, sure. Why not? Let's do one more. And then we'll say that we're done with these themes. And uh, how you doing there, Slackware? Slackware is still installing. It's still installing. Good grief. Holy cow. Uh, X11, ooh, ooh, we're in the X's. Does that mean we're getting near the end? Is it is it installing it in alphabetical order? I don't know. We'll find out shortly. Uh, ooh, installing passage zap, M player. Uh, no, it's not It's not just in alphabetical order. Bluemon, uh, electric sheep, Fluxbox. Oh, we're installing a lot of different desktop environments here. Okay, system settings add-on installer. Uh, oh, yeah, we're done there. Okay, so I'm going to close this. So now, now we have some, um, actually, we only have one additional one. And that's Debreeze. So the other one's obviously um, desktop themes. We have some desktop themes here, but let's just go with look and feel. And uh, let's go with Debreeze, shall we? And we will apply that one to the desktop. And miraculously, we have a brand new look and feel for the desktop. Um, uh, we could go, I'm not gonna go with that desktop feel there. Okay, so there we go, there's Debreeze. Um, let us go and take a look now at desktop themes, which is a little bit different. Uh, desktop themes, you may have noticed when I switched to Debreeze that the rounded corners, for instance, of my, uh, of my icons up there disappeared. So let me just uh, close that down and see how that vanished there. Let's go back to the desktop theme here. And I'm gonna go back to look and feel and I'm gonna go back to, um, oh, let's go to United. Um, I guess I had already installed that one, apply. And take a look at the uh, at this thing up here. There we go, see? See how that has changed up there? And the buttons down at the bottom are gonna have changed the way uh, the way that uh, the menus pop up and so forth. All that will have changed the result. Uh, if I go with Breeze here, um, actually, let's just, let's just leave it. Let's just go back to Breeze here and say apply and um, go for that light look again. So now I'm gonna go with desktop theme, which is more a collection of how widgets are represented. So the theme is maintained, sorry, the uh, look and feel is maintained but now I can specify, you know, the way that uh, my widgets and things look on the desktop. And again, if I don't like what's there, let's let's click oxygen there and go apply. And see, there we go. Now we've got the nice dark rounded crystal sort of look to it. See that? And uh, if I go with Gotham over here and I click apply, uh, there we go. Let's go with air, uh, which I guess is the Mac-ish, take a, the Mac-ish look there. There we go and um unity ambiance let's do that one apply how we do now oh 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 we're almost there slackware yes 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 um let me just uh say we'll, we'll just uh, leave that for the moment we'll go back to it in a moment if uh if slackware is going to make me do like a whole pile of other different things all right let's expand this back up yes the excitement mounts tension blah 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 all that stuff um <clears throat> there we go. Make USB flash boot. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip it. So I'm going to click OK for skip. Try to install Lilo. Lilo. In an age where basically every Linux distribution is using Grub or for that matter Grub 2, we're still using Lilo here. All right. So again, this is a great distribution to get your hands dirty and to standard. Now I have to actually configure, um, you know, the kind of console that I'm using. This is fine. 
unless you're using now, I'm just going to say no. Remember, everything is the, the safe thing is always just to say no. Okay, MBR, install to the master boot record, installing the Linux loader, Lilo. And now it's going to configure um, X. And uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the most basic of all when it comes to X here. So I'm going to say, okay, the GPM allows you to cut and paste in the virtual console using a mouse. If you choose to run out of boot time, blah, 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 uh, nah, just, just leave it alone. Uh, would you like to configure your network? No, no, because I'm using the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm using the uh, systems network. And over here, we can decide what, you know, additional things we want the system to start up automatically. SSH is starting. I'm cool with that. Um, I really don't care about everything else that's here. So let's just go, okay, I'm happy with what it is. Console font configura con configuration, configuration. No, I'm not going to do anything here. Hardware clock is set to local time. That's fine. I'm good with that. I am not in Alaska. I am in the Eastern time zone. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, let me see. And we're going to fire up by default, the KDE X top environment. Um, sorry, KDE environment, although there are a whole bunch of other ones. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting about KDE on this in just a second. If you take a look at my KDE, okay, I click the button down here. This is a modern KDE plasma desktop. It's got all these funky widgets. Uh, you're gonna say, why is he pointing this out? It's got all these funky widgets. Uh, let's let's get a new theme over here. We'll go with the uh, most downloads and uh, the Arc KDE. I'm going to install that one. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Arc Color. There we go, Arc Color. And, um, and I am going to click install on this one as well. I'm gonna go with New Mix over here. Why? Because I just wanna add a few. And uh, there we go. So now we've got a few additional ones. So let's go with the new mix here, just uh, with that one, just to, to change it. So as you see, there, there are a whole bunch of interesting, see see how that changed there? And we've got the uh, orange text on the bottom there. Um, our color, let's go with our color, gonna go apply. See, there we go, see, see? See how everything changed? We've got a new desktop uh, theme that just uh, just took over there. Looks very lovely. Okay, all right, now let's go back to Slackware. Okay, and we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna start off KDE. There is currently no password set. Uh, would you like to set a root password? Sure, why not? New password, S-E-C-R-E-T. Warning, weak password, use it again to use it anyway. S-E-C-R-E-T. That's my super secret password. Re-enter the password, S-E-C-R-E-T. Press enter to continue. The root password has been changed. You may now reboot your system, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna exit. So, so there we are, that is the Slackware Linux setup. I'm gonna say exit this, please remove the installation disk. Well, the installation disk in this case is just a CD-ROM image. So I'm gonna say, okay, would you like to reboot your system? Yes, I would like to reboot my system. So blah, 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 requesting system reboot. All right, select OS. Well, there's only the one in there, loading Linux. I love this old school text only boot. I miss text only boot. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I do. I do. I love it. Pum, 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 pum. Pum, pum. Oh, there we go. Dark star login. All right. So um, I'm going to log in as root. I, I, I know what I'm going to do here is totally insecure. I don't care. This is just, you know, so S E C R E T. Oh, all right, fine, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. Add user, add user, add user, new username, uh, login name for new user, Marcel. Enter UID, just the next one available. Initial group user is fine, I'm good with that. Um, and no, I don't wanna add any additional groups. Home Marcel, shell bin bash, expiry date, blah, blah, blah. Enter to go ahead and make the account. Uh, Marcel Gagne, uh, room number. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that one. Uh, password, S-E-C-R-E-T. 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 That's my super secret password. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Exit. All right. Marcel. Uh, I'm sorry. S-E-C-R-E-T. I almost forgot my password. It's, you know, it's a, it's a complex Terribly complex password. Isn't it strange that the same people that laugh at gypsy fortune tellers take economists seriously? Yeah, it is actually. It is very interesting. Uh, fortune. Obviously, the fortune program is installed. Rocky lemmas of innovation. Rocky's lemma of innovation prevention. Unless the results are known in advance, funding agencies will reject the proposal. Ain't it the truth? All right, start X. Are you ready? 
because that's how we fire up the desktop in this. All right. Now, are you, have you been around Linux for a while? Have you been doing this for a long time? Do you know this stuff? Well, if you do, you're going to notice that this is, this is an older KDE. This is not the KDE that I'm running down here. And in fact, um, whoops. And in fact, let's click over here, uh, kick and uh, whoops. Sorry, it's, it's, it's still doing stuff in the background here. But if I do that, let's open the file manager and uh, we'll just go from the file manager. We will go to, um, uh, where, where are we? Oops, I'm sorry, I'm moving things around here. I actually wanted to move them in here. There we go, I wanted to just move that in here. Um, which version of KDE are we talking about here? Which version are we talking about? Um, help, help about KDE, there we go. KDE 4.14, 4.14. Let's take a look over here. Let's take a look at my KDE, okay? Um, I don't know, let's let's go any kind of an app here. Uh, well, actually I have the terminal window open, so let's do the console window and I'm gonna go help and I'm gonna go about KDE. Take a look at the difference here. So this one here is um, is KDE, uh, what, what version are we talking about here? Uh, it, it doesn't actually say it's it's five point something or other. It's it's plasma five point one eight or five point one nine or something. I thought it would just show me here. I thought it would show me about KDE. It's just oh about KDE console. All right, no, I want to know about KDE. No, it's not about. It's not showing me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's uh, DPKG dash L grep plasma. All right, plasma five point one two. 5.12, I said it was 5.8, 5.12. So I'm actually quite a bit further along than that. So 5.12 is what it is here, okay? Windows 10 supports Linux. Is it the same experience as to getting Linux separately? Um, hey, Collins, how you doing? Nice to have you on board here. Um, it is, you can actually boot up a Linux desktop in Windows 10, but it's not the same thing. I mean, you are essentially running a, ver you know, you are essentially running um, either a, uh, a Linux desktop or Linux applications on Windows 10. The experience isn't exactly the same because underneath the surface, you always have Windows 10. That's kind of what the answer is for that one. Um, which isn't to say like, I mean, with Windows 10, you have like the bash shell. So when you go down to the shell where you used to have a command prompt, now it's no longer a command prompt. Now it's, um, it, you know, it's not CND. It's not a DOS prompt anymore. It is actually a Linux shell. So um, specifically the Ubuntu Linux version of the born shell. So, uh, or the born again shell, B-A-S-H. So the experience is not the same because you're running inside it. Uh, and in fact, here, even here, the experience is not the same because what I'm doing here is I'm actually running a full virtual machine. So the, um, the version of, uh, so if you did not see this at the beginning, uh, AQEMU is the virtualization software that I am using to fire up this particular incarnation of Slackware. And if I go over to where it says VM here, you can see that I'm using uh, a 64-bit architecture, an x86 64-bit architecture, um, and uh, everything is defined in here. So the experience here is exactly as it would be on an actual machine. If you're running Linux under Windows, it's not exactly the same because Windows is always there. In other words, if you go down and you click that start button down there, it's actually Windows that you're looking at as opposed to Linux that you're looking at. But you could have Linux running inside, you know, more or less what you see here. Um, the personally i personally i would do it the other way if i absolutely positively had to run windows for something and uh, typically i don't actually need to do that but if i needed to i would run windows in a virtual machine on a linux desktop as opposed to the other way around i hope that answers the question let me know if it does <laughs> i'll try to keep an eye on the uh, chat screen over there um, uh, okay, so so like, like I said, you can see that the version that's running on there is quite a bit different than the version that's here. Um, I have a lot of the same tools, but but again, Slackware, while it's continually maintained, while there is what you'd call an up-to-date version of it, it's not exactly, you know, 100% up-to-date, you name Dash A. Let's take a look here, Dash A. And uh, just for the fun of it, take a look. 4.4.14, that's the kernel that's there. You name dash A, and the kernel that I'm running here is 4.13. 
So quite a bit later in terms of incarnations. But again, Slackware is not, I wouldn't call Slackware a distribution for everybody. Okay, Slackware is a great distribution uh, for getting a feel for the history of Linux. It's a great distribution if you are concerned about, um, you know, getting a, a pure experience uh, for Linux. And here's another thing which uh, will mean something to some of you, maybe not to everybody else, but let's go SU dash and I'm going to go S E C R E T. Okay, so I'm basic. Oops, sorry, let me try that again. S U hyphen S E C R E T. And uh, now I'm root. Okay, oh, let's do this. What to do? If a Starship equipped with an FTL hyperdrive lands in your backyard, first of all, do not run after your camera. You will not have any film. And given the state of computer... Oh, never mind. <laughs> That's the fortune program, in case you don't know, in case you haven't figured that out. Um, thank you, Collins. Appreciate it. And uh, happy to answer the question there. Okay, um, so if you... Again, if you take a look there, it's... Um, if I go to ls slash etc slash init dot d... Again, this is kind of this is kind of geeky here, I suppose. But if you uh, slash etc slash init dot oh, sorry init uh, dot d um, oops ls um, functions uh, oh rc sorry slash etc slash rc dot dot oh there we go rc dot d. So if I go to rc dot d um, and you take a look in here. Slackware still uses what I would call the classic way of firing up system services in Linux. It uses good old fashioned RC scripts. If I go over here and I do an a sudo because it's a it's a um, you know it's a modern Ubuntu system, and uh, sccret. No, that's not my password. I'm just kidding. Whoops. S -u sorry, sudo dash i. Come on, Marcel, there we go, sudo dash i. And if I go to slash etc slash rc uh, dot, sorry, rc zero dot d, um, we are dealing, I mean, the system uses a very different way of, you know, there's a, there's a different technique for starting things up. This is kind of more um, what's known as classic system five, for instance. So this is classic Unix, not just classic Linux, but classic Unix in the way that it does a lot of things. So. Slackware is probably not the distribution. If you want something that is the latest and greatest, that is, um, um, you know, uh, Collins, I'll answer your question right now. I'll pause for a second. Um, I, th I think you should give it a shot. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to show you something right now. If you are watching, I'm going to show you something which I think is probably the best way to do this. By the way, if you haven't already done so, please go to my YouTube page, which is uh, youtube.com slash freethinker at large and subscribe, subscribe. But let me just open up another window here and show you something. Um, virtualbox, virtualbox.org. As I pointed out, there's a lot of basically plain old ordinary uh, Linux stuff in a Windows 10 system. Uh, you know, like I said, the uh, window, the bash shell is there. You can actually type apt space install and install, uh, you know, pretty much anything that you want. So if you're new to it, um, it may not be the very best way to actually build something in, uh, in a Windows system. But VirtualBox, VirtualBox makes this all dead simple, easy, okay? Install VirtualBox. There is a Windows. If you go to Downloads here and you take a look, there is a Windows binary. So you can actually install a Windows version of VirtualBox on your Windows 10 system, and then you can run any kind of uh, distribution that you want. You can experiment with Linux and run it inside VirtualBox. That is what I would do. The only reason that I'm not doing it over here, the only reason that I'm not doing it uh, is because on a Linux system, uh, Linux... <clears throat> Let me try that again. Modern Linux distributions have virtualization already built into the system. Like um, if if I do, uh, I did this at the beginning, so you probably did not catch it if you were there, but um, QEMU hyphen system. Take a look at all these different systems that QEMU and KVM is able to mimic. All this stuff is built in to a Linux distribution already. So you don't actually even need, I mean, you could do this from the command line if you wanted to. I don't do it because, you know, honestly, if I'm trying to show somebody how to work with this, the command line is not the best way to do this, okay? Um, unless you want to get, like like I said, deep down and dirty, super geeky. 
Um, but there are programs like uh, Q A Q E M U, which which do all this stuff. You know, like if I want to create a new machine here, uh, there's a wizard. I can say next typical. Uh, you know, what kind of a system? It's a Linux system. Uh, um, what do I want to call the machine? I'm going to call the machine uh, Edgar. Edgar, and then I can click next, and then I can say how big I want this thing to be. I'm going to say 20 gigabyte disk. Um, all this stuff just is just dead simple, easy. I can decide what the architecture of the system is going to be. Um, I can attach a CD-ROM to it. I can uh, define a different graphics card. All this stuff is just kind of magic inside the software. And that, by the way, is what VirtualBox is going to give you. VirtualBox is going to give you all that stuff. But I don't need to have VirtualBox. I could install it on a Linux system because it is actually available. See, I can install it on a Linux distribution, but it's not needed because all the software that's necessary to virtualize is already on the system. I don't need to do any of that stuff. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to sip some coffee here. Oh, I'm out of coffee. Good grief, I'm out of coffee. That means I'm going to have to wrap this up in a minute here. Um, let's do one more thing here. Let's fire up Conqueror. Uh, which is a combination web browser and uh, oh let's just go um, slackware.com uh, you know, well, obviously there's some configuration that I need to do to make that work in, um, in Slackware but um, let me see. There was something else I wanted. Yeah, anyway, so, so that's basically it. And there are, you know, although I can do all this stuff from the command line, there are also other tools that exist on the Linux system. There is a um, boxes. Do I have that installed? There we go. Virtual Machine Viewer Manager. Gnome Boxes or Boxes is another virtual machine manager. Okay. I'm not hugely fond of boxes. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with boxes, but I'm not hugely fond of it. Um, and of course, there is um, there is uh, classic vert manager. So there you go. Virtual machine manager is the uh, classic. Um, is why well, I call it a classic because it's been around basically a long, long time. That's the other GUI for doing stuff like that. I've gotten rather fond of AQEMU, although again. Uh, if you're the developer and you're paying attention, please, please consider either getting back into updating this thing. Or if you're a developer that loves doing this kind of stuff, please pick up the project and continue developing AQEMU. It works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, it'd be nice to know that this thing was maintained and continued to be maintained. But, you know, I digress. Anyway, so Virtual Machine Manager, GNOME Boxes, AQEMU. Those are all graphical interfaces to QEMU-KVM, which is the virtualization software that makes it possible to install and run another operating system on top of your operating system. And since I am out of coffee and my voice is probably going at this point, I want to thank everybody who has dropped by. Uh, or, you know, if you aren't watching this live and you are watching it later, I would like to thank you for having done that as well. Um, I'm just going to do this, uh, this absolutely terrible, um, you know, um, uh, self-promotion thing at the end here. Uh, you can follow me on cookingwithlinux.com. Uh, you can follow me on marcelgagne.com or you can go to my um, Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash marcelgagne. I just recently started this. If you want to support my habit for video creation, uh, for explaining things, for all the other stuff that I do, please, please consider supporting me here. Again, I just started this, so this is a, a relatively new thing for me. And uh, finally, finally, the other place uh, that you really, really want to do this to is, uh, oh, there it is, YouTube. It remembers min this is the min browser in case you're curious go to youtube over here and hit that subscribe button this really helps me uh it helps me keep in touch with you guys and uh it helps me in terms of you know being able to uh justify myself to youtube <laughs> with <laughs> with <laughs> with ads on top of my videos and so forth so please please consider doing that as well and um, this is where I'm going to leave it for today. I'm going to go back to uh, Slackware over here. I'm going to close this little window here. And uh, I'm going to go through the process of actually saying goodnight properly to, um, to Slackware. I'm going to say shut down. Yes, turn off computer. Goodbye, Slackware. Good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. No, oh, it didn't shut it down. It just, uh, oh, there we go. It is actually shutting it down. Okay, that's good. I thought it just took me back down to the shell. But it is actually shutting down the machine. So remember, um, share this, tell other people. And um, oh, by the way, one last thing. If you are watching right to the end, and if you're watching right to the end, you know, bless you, you're, you're, you're awesome. But if you're watching right to the end, uh, consider 
consider um, uh, you know answering a question in the comments below leave a comment uh, I'm gonna switch to my webcam here for a second I'm gonna go st uh, let me see I'm gonna go switch to my webcam so that you've got my face just for a second transition and uh, there we go you got my little face in the corner there um, if you are still watching uh, consider letting me know in a comment when a good time would be to do these live things um, I've been told that these are good things that these are fun things however I have no idea when a good time is so perhaps we should pick a time where we can be together on a regular basis and then that way you guys can tell me what you'd like me to do what you'd like me to uh, to try out for you and um, and uh, you know then we can make sure that we're here at the same time and at a time that's not only convenient for me but convenient for you guys as well all right all right this is where I'm leaving it um, thanks for being here talk to you later and uh, now I'm gonna hit the uh, OBS button that says um, that I'm gonna stop streaming so bye <laughs>